Hey guys, Leslie here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Prada Beauty launched at the beginning of August. They came with skincare, foundations, eyeshadow palettes, lip products. It all just looks stunning. I was mostly interested in the foundation, so I did quite a few orders to get the right shade, and that's kind of what prompted this video because I just thought if anyone's looking for the shade and you're a similar skin tone to me, maybe this will help. So the full name is the Prada Reveal Skin Optimizing Foundation. It's refillable. So you have this outer housing, which is plastic, and it has the Prada logo in gold, and then also at the top on the silver cap. And then the refill is this inner part, which is a glass bottle, and it has the name of the shade and the name of the foundation. So yeah, it's kind of nice that it comes as two parts. If you want to buy the refill on its own, it's £39 for obviously the same size. So I bought a number of shades, I think it was five or six in the end, but there's 33 shades total and within that you have cool, warm and neutral undertones. So out of those shades, I found DW70 was the best match for me and I'll talk more about these shades later because I bought so many. <laughs> so a couple of claims from Prada about the foundation is that it's meant to be long wearing, a buildable medium coverage and a soft matte finish. It's meant to be suitable for all skin types including sensitive and then there's this thing called this micro filter technology which they've trademarked. Essentially it's meant to have smart molecules in which micro crystallize on the skin and they give this diffused blurring effect. So it's meant to be an in real life filter, essentially. So in terms of ingredients, they've called out vitamin E and niacinamide, which are meant to help the skin's natural radiance and help with hydration. There's also lactobacillus extract complex, which is essentially a probiotic, and this is meant to help refine the skin's texture. So basically this foundation is meant to help your skin look good as you wear it. So they're combining skincare and makeup. So jumping into application now, and here's a shot of my skin without makeup. There's a few bumps and a bit of texture, a few dark marks, but it's relatively settled. And in terms of prep, I'm just using moisturizer. I'm not adding any primers or anything to enhance the foundation. I just wanted you guys to see it as it is. It does say on the Prada website that you can apply their moisturizer to prep, but I don't have it. So with application, it does say to apply one pump for light to medium coverage or two pumps for medium to full coverage. One pump is quite a lot actually, and it gives the skin, I'd say a, like a light to medium finish, as I said, and you can build this up, but I think you can only really build it up to a medium. It looks beautiful, I love the finish, it looks gorgeous, but it's definitely a medium. If you have any dark marks like me, even though mine are not, that bad at the moment they still kind of peep through a little bit i mean i find this with a lot of foundations but yeah that's just something to bear in mind so i apply most of my foundations with my fingers i just prefer how it looks i like that my fingers warm up the product a little bit obviously you can use a brush they do have a brush that they sell that you can use with the foundation or you can just use whatever you want or a sponge and yeah that might impact how you can layer it i just felt like a light to medium finish was the better coverage for me. I think if I applied too much, it just felt a little bit more heavy. It's quite a thick foundation. I mean, it's not crazy thick, but it gives like a nice blurred effect. Just, just going light with it. So I just don't think it needs to be layered too much. So here's how it looks when it's applied and versus no makeup. So I jumped off camera to finish the rest of my makeup. I just added mascara, filled in my brows, a bit of blush and lip gloss. I really didn't want to do the most. I want you guys to see the foundation. This is how it looks. And yeah, I really like it. So I've worn this foundation for a few weeks. I kind of know how it goes. I didn't add any powder just so you guys can see. I have oily skin. My skin always looks a little bit... Uh, <laughs> dewy we'll call it dewy um but yeah it's oily and i've just embraced the fact that my skin is oily i don't mind powder every now and again but i just think when i'm showing a foundation and like how it looks it's better for me to not apply powder so i've actually had it on for a few hours now as usual when i film i have a few technical difficulties something always goes wrong so what i shot earlier of me talking about it um I'm not going to use so I'm talking again now and it still looks pretty good but yeah I will come back in a few hours let you guys know how it's going and that will be like a full day of wear and I'll give you guys my final thoughts on this foundation okay so I'm back it's been I want to say seven hours total I'm now using 
exclusively artificial light. I have a light here, a light there, and a light there. I usually like to have daylight um, just to kind of fill the room and make it look a little bit more natural. So you can see how it would look normally, but I just don't have daylight at the moment. And yeah, this is how my skin is looking. So there's a tiny bit of creasing. It looks a little bit shiny. I mean, on camera, it always looks a lot worse than it actually is in person. Honestly, it looks fine. And this obviously is without powder, without primer. If you add those, then imagine the finish is then perfect or at least close to how you'd want it to sit all day. I think it sits really well. So before I round off the video, I thought I would chat really quickly about the shades. I think that's gonna trip people up. I don't know if maybe it's me, but I am more tanned than I normally am. Um, so I don't know if maybe that's why I'm I'm seeing the shades as so starkly different because uh, I'm I'm not usually this tanned. So the shade I use is DW70. If we break that down, that's Deep Warm 70. After Deep Warm 70, there are nine shades. So that's quite close to the the end of the the shades. And I just don't feel like I'm that dark. I think a lot of the reason I've been struggling is because with any other brand, I'm always a medium. I'm always like smack bang in the middle of the, the depths of shades that there are. Maybe it's my mistake, but I automatically thought, okay, my shade is gonna be NW50 or MN50 because that's kind of in the middle. It's medium. And looking at the swatches that they had on Selfridges anyway, the way the shades were set out, it looked like they, that might even be too dark for me. So I was like, oh, okay, this is gonna be my shade. And I guess a lot when buying online, and usually I, I do quite well, um, but yeah, I completely messed up with this one. I ordered MW50 and MN50. They were the first shades I ordered too light. So I went back and I ordered MW55 because I realized, you know what? The warm undertone is the one that's working the best for me. The neutral just looks too pink. And that was still too light. So I went back and I got MN60 because with the 60s shades, they only have neutral and cool. And I'm like, well, I'm definitely not gonna be cool because cool is usually more pink. It's not the worst in terms of depth, or at least it doesn't look that bad on camera, but in person, it's, it's quite light. And then after 60, it jumps straight to 70. There's no 65. And I just think if it existed, my shade would be MW65. I just, I just have a feeling. So mine is DW70. And to be fair, once it's blended in, it looks really good. And for now it works with my tan skin, but I know as I start to pale out, I'm gonna struggle because the 60s are not the right undertone. So I'm probably gonna have to mix and match with other foundations. But yeah, that's just something to bear in mind. If you can, go in store and swatch them. So in case it helps, other brands of foundations that work for me, Dior 4WO, but specifically the Backstage Foundation. For some reason, that shade in their other foundations just pulls slightly too pink, but with the Backstage, it's very yellow. Pat McGrath, medium 18, usually works for me. Nars Aruba, Valentino MA5, usually Laura Mercier 4N1, if we're talking the tinted moisturizer of their new foundation. I actually found 4N2T works really well for me. Who else did I use recently? Oh, Fenty. So Fenty launched a few more shades. I think they've got 59 shades now, if not 60, but they launched a new shade, which is 335, and that is my actual shade. I've never had a shade in Fenty, and that one actually works for me. So hopefully that helps anyone that's thinking that they might be similar skin tone. But all of those shades are medium, so I think that's what's really tripping me up. I'm, I'm usually always a medium. I very rarely veer off into the deep category, so yeah. We'll see what happens with shades. Maybe they'll add some more later. Regardless, I love the finish. I just think it's such a beautiful foundation. It wears really well. I like the packaging. I think it looks nice. I actually kind of like the refillable bottle on its own. I don't want to say too much because this is kind of just like an intro to Prada. I did buy lip colors as well. I actually did some work with them on the lip colors. So I actually have quite a few. So I might come back and do another video on that. I am also meant to be going in store and getting shade matched properly. So I think it'll be interesting to see what a professional or, or the, at least the person on the counter thinks about what shade is gonna match 
in a couple of weeks time when I might have lost my tan a little bit. So yeah, we'll see. As ever, if you guys have any questions, comments, let me know. Thanks for watching if you made it this far and I will see you in a new video soon. Bye guys.